This is John Tecklenburg, the mayor of Charleston, and I'm here with Kimberly of So Exquisite Magazine, and she's terrific, and please check out So Exquisite. Um, I was born and, and partially raised in, in Charleston. I say that because um, my parents moved to uh, Orangeburg when I was in, um, in school, in grade school, and I actually graduated from high school up there, from Orangeburg Wilkinson. But I, I, was, I was born here, and we lived on Broad Street, uh, right down the street, at uh, Broad and Legree Street, and um, I went to Cathedral School, uh, which was uh, right across the street from where we live. So that was my little world, and uh, our church, and school, and family here together. And I have a large extended family, my grandmother, and granddad lived around the corner on, well, on Rutledge Avenue and um, lots of aunts and uncles and cousins and um, you know just remember uh, you know a pretty fun time growing up as a young kid and then we moved to Orangeburg which was um, a whole nother experience. Um, it's only 70 miles away but it's uh, very culturally uh, different in a way. Uh, my mom had grown up there, and my my dad had had the opportunity for uh, to buy a, a family business when my grandfather on, on my mom's side passed away. So that's what led us to move there. But it was funny because having grown up there, my mom um, knew she didn't want to stay there. So as soon as my oldest brother got out of school and could uh, got out of college and could run the business, I mean their plan from the very get-go was to um, move back to Charleston and so by the time I went to college um, I went to Georgetown University up in DC um, my parents moved back to Charleston and I never lived in Orangeburg again and after a few years everybody kind of forgot we'd ever moved away for a little while and I you know even when we were living up there my parents uh, kept a membership at their church and all their you know, kind of social stuff and we'd be down here during the summer and all kinds of stuff so it was really a tale of two cities anyway. So my mother ran for city council uh, when, when she got back and that was in the 80s and I was out of college and we helped her get elected and so that kind of uh, inspired uh, uh, interest in city government for me and um, just growing up around them uh, inspired me to want to be active in the community and try to do things, good things for, for my city and my brothers and sisters in this world. Uh, that's just kind of upbringing I had. And so I was always, um, I had a business going. I had started a business here called Southern Oil Company, which was a kind of adjunct of, of that family business I, I mentioned to you, but, but it was my own. And I uh, started it from scratch here in Charleston in 1983, and, um, uh, and that was after I had started a similar business in Columbia, and, and then I started one in Savannah. So I was an oil jobber, an oil distributor, and um, represented Shell and Mobile and uh, Castrol and other brands, and um, had a pretty thriving business and, and would be considered uh, successful by most um, standards and uh, gave, gave back a lot of time to the community and nonprofit organizations. And all the while, given that uh, experience with my mom running for office, um, I, I was interested in politics and helping people get elected and with campaigns or, or a lot of fun. Um, it was the first time I ever ran myself, though, when I ran for mayor. So um, that was certainly a different perspective. So this whole lifetime of, oh, oh, and then when I sold my business in 1995, someone just came along and wanted, wanted it bad enough, so they bought out my business, but it wasn't like a golden parachute, maybe it was a bronze parachute, so it wasn't like I was um, ready to retire at that, that age. So I went to work for Mayor Riley as the Director of Economic Development for the City of Charleston um, during the later 90s. And then um, when, when it ended up going back into business after five years with the city, but it, it certainly gave me the experience and uh, taste of, of um, the day-to-day -day of uh, city, city of Charleston government and 
how it works and how it maybe doesn't work sometimes. And um, so um, anyway, when Mayor Riley finally decided he was ready to retire, I, I felt like I was still young enough to offer something and decided to run. And lo and behold, here we are. Yeah. Uh, notably, I, I helped, um, I was manager for Fritz Holling's last senatorial campaign in 98. Um, and, and been involved in some other campaigns and being a candidate even more so. They are experiences uh, where you, you have to go all in, you know, uh, if you're planning on being successful. Um, and that doesn't always work out, but regardless, it's, it's almost like you, you, <laughs> you give up the rest of your life, you know, when you run, run for office. That's, that's how it was for me. And my, luckily, uh, my loving wife was um, on board 100% and my partner in the campaign and my son Joseph um, helped manage the campaign. So it was, it was kind of a family affair and it was nice, it was an incredible experience, you know, working with them. Um, but it, it's, um, it's an amazing experience and, and uh, what you, uh, the most important important part of it is um, rather than going out and blabbing and talking, even though people want to hear your views, that's, um, that's certainly true, it's listening and, and listening what's on people's minds and what's in their heart. And um, because when you um, serve um, citizens and uh, serve in a public um, office like this, um, I think it's critical to to, to feel that you uh, connect and know the hearts and dreams of the people that you serve and, uh, and do your best to try to accommodate that. Well, I started taking lessons as a little kid and my grandmother that I mentioned on Rutledge Avenue, she taught piano lessons over there out of her home for over 50 years. And I took from her and then another teacher when we moved up the road. And I just always, um, uh, well, to be honest with you, at an early age, I, I wasn't that wild about it. You know, I was more interested in playing football, but I apparently had a little bit of talent, I guess, passed down through my grandmother, a little tiny bit. She was an awesome player. And uh, so I was in the, in the eighth grade, and uh, I quit taking piano lessons. And these there weren't many keyboard players around. So these high school guys had a band and they needed a keyboard player and they asked me if I joined the band. And um, this dates me because, you know, we were interested in the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Motown and, and the Monkees were on TV. And, you know, so like being in a band seemed like a cool thing to do. So I joined the band and um, it was a rhythm and blues band, R&B music. And uh, uh, we had a dance at the high school that we were playing at, and this is in 1968, so this is a long time ago, you think about the value of money. I made $35 on that gig, and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool, I like this. And so I, I kowtowed back to my mother after a little while and said, could I take piano lessons again? Would you allow me to do that? So I, at that point, I wanted to do it, you know, that makes a big difference. And so through high school, I just kept playing it, and um, other than, I guess now, and I just played one song or two with a group uh, when asked, um, I was in some kind of band from the eighth grade until about two years ago. Um, in fact, I had a gig playing in North Charleston with the Gennaro band that I played with them every Thursday night for 32 years. And so I love playing music. I love the, um, the camaraderie of playing with a, a group. I love jazz because it's improvisational and rhythmic and, you know, um, it's fun. And so, what can I say, I love it. Yeah. Um, well, there certainly seems to be a, a faster pace um, in a way, and the development of the city has been um, remarkable on one hand and positive um, in a number of ways. I'll give you an example. Um, when I got out of 
high school in 73 um, and admittedly I graduated from the school in Orangeburg but I, you know part of Charleston as well and knew a lot of people and and a lot of people that I knew would go off to college and um, you know you didn't have the sense that that South Carolina and Charleston uh, was a place to come back to uh, if you excelled, if you got a really higher level of education. Um, you know, the opportunities, opportunities existed elsewhere. Atlanta, D.C., New York, Chicago. Um, and, and so that's, that's not a good thing. And so I feel like part of our growth and development has, has started to shift that where um, I met this fine young man yesterday, Jerome Smalls, who graduated from West Ashley High School, and he happens to be going to my alma mater, Georgetown University. And um, I mean, I said, well, what are you gonna do after college? I wanna make sure that you wanna come back to Charleston. And he was like, absolutely, I'm planning on coming back and contributing to our community. And, and for him to be able to, to uh, be so talented and want to come back here and have the opportunity to do something here in his hometown where I, I could tell you this man could make it in New York any day. I mean, he's an incredibly bright, talented, personable young man. Um, but that's the kind of positive change that I, I like to see. Now, um, you know, just with the population gain and, and not keeping up with our roads and bridges, you know, there are challenges with that growth that I've seen. And um, so that's where we need to play catch up on one hand with, um, with infrastructure and building things, but we also need going forward maybe a little better sense of balance about what needs to go where. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't continue to grow, but I just think we need to be a little more thoughtful about where that growth occurs and how we do it. So um, it's uh, generally been a great thing in my lifetime. It's brought us opportunities. Um, you know, even the growth in tourism has brought us restaurants and cultural um, opportunities that we didn't have here when I was a kid. I mean, I remember you could count the decent restaurants, um, you know, on your hand. There was Henry's and Perdita's and, you know, a couple others, the Colony House. And, um, you know, now you can't even keep track of all the good places to eat in Charleston. So, I mean, there, there's been some great aspects of our growth and development, and there's some challenges too. Well, it lifts my spirits, and, and um, I, I guess, I hope I come across as being a people person, I think I am, mm -hmm. and my wife uh, probably then double that or triple it, and, and, and you get Sandy in terms of uh, being a connector and a people person, and we just kind of thrive on it. So if I sat around the office all day long and dealt with these papers and issues and buildings and all like that, um, It'd be a pretty boring job. Um, you know, I, I like to get out because it uplifts me. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you do something nice for somebody, you get more out of it than they do. Um, I feel that way about engaging our citizens and, um, and uh, having those one-on-one -on -one encounters and relationships. And it's interesting because, you know, um, most of it's very positive. And it's all positive in a sense, but, but it's funny, you know, we go to the grocery store and you hear about, Mayor, you know, uh, I had to wait too long at that traffic light or my drain and, you know, functioning. I'm not complaining about that. I mean, that's part of, of, um, of what we do. Um, but it's, it's so, like, we had the initiative on West Ashley, you know, in the last year or so of trying to revitalize and get things going over there. and. Um, I go West Ashley or anywhere and meet folks that live from West Ashley and they, they really uplift, the, uplift me by saying, you know, Mayor, we really like what's going on and um, keep up, keep it up and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that makes me want to 
you know, even get more done and keep keep turning up the heat, so to speak. So um, anyway, meeting and greeting and, and communicating and like I said earlier, um, knowing the heart of our citizens is I, I view it as a as an important part of um, of, uh, of the job. Well, you know, we have um, a lot of events here. You're right. Um, you know, traditionally I've, I've loved the cultural arts events like Moja and um, Spoleto, Piccolo Spoleto. I've been an artist in Piccolo now for well over 20 years myself playing the piano. So, um, you know, I, I thrive on those. I, I love jazz events, of course, because I, I'm a big fan of jazz. Um, I do like to... Um, I like my groceries, so um, even this new wine and food festival that we have is a fun one and, and um, lots of opportunities for, for a good beverage and something to eat. So um, anyway, um, I, I love all those kinds of events, but I like the smaller, smaller ones too. Uh, just going to the farmer's market. We opened one in West Ashley last year in the sense of community at that farmer's market is just um, um, unreal. I mean, people are there to get vegetables, but they're there to interact with each other and uh, just enjoy each other and get to know each other. It's a, it's a great sense of community, and, um, and uh, I like those. Um, since the um, terrible tragedy at uh, Mother Emanuel, um, I think it's been fitting and uh, appropriate and um, to, to enjoy uh, getting together and, and being reflective of what happened and, and um, thankful to God uh, for his amazing grace and to the, to the families, but to be proactive in, um, in, in thinking about what we're going to do um, afterwards so, and going forward. So all those kind of events are, are great for me. Well, uh, biggest lessons, um, probably divide that in a couple of categories. Um, when it comes to development and, and um, those kinds of issues, I would say that design matters. Um, the way things are thought about and how they function and how they look be it a building or a street or a sidewalk, uh, any part of the public realm, that design matters. And I think that's particularly true in this city where we have this amazing heritage of architecture and buildings, the country's oldest preservation ordinance. And um, so design matters. And I knew that um, kind of just from growing up here, but, um, it's been uh, accentuated since I've been here. Um, the other thing that matters with people is, um, as I mentioned before, listening and, and, and knowing the pulse or the heart of uh, the community and that collaboration um, with, with all sectors and diversity of our community is, is, is important because we all have a different perspective. I grew up, I had my life experience and you did. And uh, so um, we're both children of God uh, and we share that humanity, but, um, but, but we have, um, you know, a different perspective. We have a different life story. And uh, I think that brings a richness to our community and to problem solving and to making good things happen. So um, collaboration is really a great thing. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting question for me because 20 years ago I was working for the city of Charleston. I was working for Mayor Riley and um, it certainly was a thought, a dream of mine that maybe one day I would be able to have this 
incredible opportunity to serve. Um, and uh, it certainly ended up working out that way. Um, so I think I exhibited some of this, but um, persistence, um, you know, is, is, is 90 percent of the game. Just um, sticking with it and being persistent, and I encourage young people to recognize that. Um, you know, studying hard and, and having all your facts and figures together is nice, and even being personable, but um, uh, not giving up. You know, keep on, keep on, keeping on, and um, and keep that um, that dream or that goal in front of you and don't give up and keep working for it and um, uh, one day you might get there, I guess uh, maybe I'll make an example of that.